Hi everyone, my name is Stuart Pearson, and I'm currently wrapping up my PhD here at TU Delft. Today, I'm really excited to share with you some of the latest work that I've been up to with my colleagues at the University and at Deltaris. Now, focus of our research is on tidal inlets and ebb-tidal deltas, specifically Ameland Inlet, which is located between the Dutch One Sea and the North Sea. Now, the interaction between the waves and tides at an inlet like this means that the sediment transport is incredibly convoluted here. We're really interested in understanding better what pathways exactly does sediment take as it moves from source to sink. Now, for example, we consider a particle begins its journey at the updrift island of Trishkeling over here, which pathways does it take to get to the adjacent island of Ameland? Would it bypass via the inlet? Would it bypass via the outer delta? Might it just recirculate over and over somewhere on the delta? Or would it be imported or exported from the basin? These are the kinds of questions that we need to answer. And understanding this is very important, not just for our sort of scientific knowledge of how tidal inlets and tidal deltas work, but also for the purposes of strategic nourishment. So Dutch government has made it a priority figure out how exactly we can best nourish these sorts of complex environments for the purposes of coastal protection. In such a complicated system, how exactly do we quantify and analyze these pathways? Well, we can do this using sediment connectivity. Sediment connectivity is a graph theory based analysis framework that breaks down complex systems, like the pathways I showed you, into a series of nodes and links. I've trans uh, schematized the inlet here into a network diagram. And below this, we have the corresponding matrix, which mathematically represents the network above. For instance, if we consider source B over here, we see that it feeds into receptors C and D. And that corresponds to these arrows here. When we have this, it means that we can ask questions like, which nodes sediment from node F go. We can also ask, what's the most direct pathway from node A to node G? Or alternatively, which nodes contribute sediment to node D? Now, this approach is already very well used in many other fields, such as neurology, transportation, ecology, hill slope and fluvial geomorphology, and much more. And this is great because it means that many of the tools that we need to analyze this stuff are already out there. So compute connectivity for this type of application, we require a multitude of field measurements or numerical model simulations for each pair of source and receptor. This approach is described in much more detail in our paper, which you can find at the link here. However, the modeling approach that we used in that paper was very labor intensive and described connectivity at low spatial resolution with just 25 cells. So naturally, we're wondering, can we do it faster and in more detail? We propose to do this faster and in higher resolution via Lagrangian particle tracking. Now, Lagrangian particle tracking is already widely used to assess connectivity in other fields like oceanography or marine ecology, where they often use it for things like monitoring plastic pollution or larval dispersal. Can we do the same kinds of thing and use all their fancy tricks to estimate sediment connectivity using a Lagrangian model? Let's try. To do so, we adapted a MATLAB-based particle tracking model. Um, it was originally used to model coral larvae dispersal. We called it SEDTRAILS, which is the Sediment Transport Visualization and Lagrangian Simulator. To do this, we advect particles using sediment transport velocities that are pre-computed from DEL3D or DFLOW-FM. These transport velocities are derived from the total bed and suspended load and then converted into an effective transport velocity. Now, for the present study, we use a scaling factor, but there's several other more sophisticated methods out there uh, by Soulsby or McDonald, which we're experimenting with now. So this is our sort of workflow. We begin with the hydrodynamics in 3D or DFLOW FM and simultaneously compute the Eulerian transport field. From this, 
We can then calculate the sediment transport pathways using SedTrails, which we then use to populate our connectivity network. Now, where do we start? Well, first, we objectively define 500 source points using the k-means algorithm to get locations that are close in space and representative of fairly local uniform depth. The cell centroids are then used as point sources. We ran our model train for the year 2017 because we had also conducted a large field campaign that year, and so we had measurements to compare with our model. And here we are the total transport pathways for all 500 sources across the ebb-tidal delta. There are a lot of interesting patterns here. For one, we can see a high passing via the inlet that I described earlier. We can also see that for particles originating lower on the shore face, we have a bypassing pathway via the outer delta. We also see that there's some pathways along the main ebb channel where we see particles leaving the inlet and then joining this big sort of transport superhighway on the east side of the delta. We also see some very interesting circulation patterns at different locations on the delta. Now, can we unravel this spaghetti using connectivity? Now, first step to doing this is to tabulate the amount of time that each particle spends in a given cell. And this is used to indicate the strength of the connection. So, Basically, the longer a particle spends in a given cell, the stronger the connection it is there. That gives us one line in this great big matrix which shows sediment coming from a given source to a given receptor. We then repeat this calculation for all 500 source locations in order to populate our network. We can then represent that matrix using a network diagram like this which again indicates the links between each node. And we can see that within this network, where there are basically the same patterns that we saw in the raw sed trails output. One of the first things that we can notice from this network diagram is that it's separated into several discrete components or subnetworks. First thing we have is this offshore pathway that is not connected with anything going on on the rest of the delta. Next thing is that we have all of these other connected nodes which don't interact with the rest of the system. However, most of the particles and pathways are connected by this main component, which you can see spans most of the inlet. And one of the cool things about plotting this in non-geographical coordinates is that we can see more clearly that there's several highly interconnected clusters that are sitting atop the main shoals. And these represent areas where um, there's a lot of variation and possibly some recirculation in the transport pathways. One of the many advantages of connectivity is that there are many metrics that we can use to quantify important patterns and identify critical nodes. For example, degree quantifies how many different sources feed into a given node and is an indicator of diversity and mixing intensity. So if you remember the previous diagrams where we had all of these different pathways converging at the top of the delta here, both from the main ebb channel, also bypassing around the outer delta, and then from these shoals, everything is meeting here. So these nodes have a very high degree. And we conclude that there would be lots of mixing of sediment here. Another question we can ask is how many particles pass through a given node? And that's quantified through a metric known as strength. This basically just gives us an indicator of the traffic um, at a given point. And we can see that all the main channels or this particular shoal complex over here um, are indeed the sort of busiest locations. Now, one of my favorite things that we can do with connectivity is to determine the dominant pathways by a shortest path analysis. And we do this in much the same way that Google Maps calculates the optimal travel route along a road network. Now, this is very useful information if you're trying to plan nourishment or quantify the potential for sand to reach a specific location. We can do this computing the path length between any given point in the network as one over the particle flux between those. And thus, the busiest connections or the strongest connections represent the shortest path. And when we look at it this way, we can see that quite happily, 
we can now draw our squiggly arrows quantitatively because this, this method reveals many of the same patterns. And so this was a glimpse of the initial developments of the said trails model and our connectivity approach. Said trails directly computes the sediment transport pathways, and this makes it ideal for doing this kind of sediment connectivity analysis. Once we have this network, we can use various connectivity metrics to get new quantitative insights into pathways. And again, this is one of my favorite parts about this approach is that we now have quantitative ways of doing what we may have just done visually otherwise, like drawing squiggly arrows. And this improves our system understanding and also gives us a chance to address practical management questions like where to dredge or nourish. Of course, what is getting started? So when I finish my PhD in the fall, I'm going to begin a postdoc position here at TU Delft in Tiltars, where we're going to continue developing the said trails model and we have all kinds of fun ideas. We want to improve the transport velocity formulations because as I mentioned, we used a fairly simplified technique, but we want to implement something a bit more robust. We also want to validate this using sediment tracers. We conducted a tracer study back in 2017, and we're looking into different geochronology approaches like OSL for tracking the sediment. We can also apply this to other sites. So we've already used this approach for other locations in the Netherlands and in the United States, and your favorite estuary could be next. We want to look into grain size sensitivity because we use 200 micron fine sand here, but how do these patterns change for finer or coarser sediment? We also want to tailor more of these connectivity metrics specifically to coastal problems. What are the questions that we want answered and how can we more quantitatively figure that out? The last thing we'd like to do is look into Lagrangian coherence structures. In these kinds of particle fields, can we see them? And if so, what are the implications of them for sediment transport? If you're interested in any of this stuff, please get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for listening.